In this video, we're going to be looking at the structures that we can see on these large torso models. So starting up here at the top, this is going to be the larynx, the collection of those cartilages. We learned we have the thyroid cartilage, and at the point we have the laryngeal prominence, or the Adam's apple. As we go down, the cricoid cartilage would be underneath this muscle here. Typically there's a muscle that's covering on top of that. Here's an entire view of the thyroid gland in case you're curious. And then from the larynx, this tube that's going down, you can see a part of it peeking through here is the trachea. And going around the trachea, we have these cartilage rings. So those are the tracheal cartilages. So on the practical, if I put the arrow here and said identify the entire organ, that would be the trachea. If I said identify the part of the organ, that would be the tracheal cartilages. Okay, so that's gonna be going down and we'll see the split of that. Um, to start off, we have the left lung over here, closer to the heart, and then we have the right lung over here. Um, on the lungs themselves, there's different lobes. It's not just an entire structure. So they're named because we go top to bottom. So this one here is called the right superior lobe, all through here. Under there is going to be the right middle lobe. And then the last one down here is the right inferior lobe. Okay, inferior takes up more of the posterior side. And then separating these lobes are gonna be these grooves or fissures. So on the right side, we have two. So this one that's sitting more at a straight line is called the horizontal fissure, separating superior and middle lobe. This one over here that's running more at a diagonal is called the oblique fissure. That separates the middle and the inferior lobe. The left lung just has two lobes. Over here, we got left superior lobe all around here. And then down here, we're gonna have left inferior lobe. And then we have another groove or fissure at a diagonal. That's also an oblique fissure. So you have oblique fissure on the left and the right. Right side only has horizontal, or horizontals only on the right side. One thing to note on the left side where this hook is occurring here, right around where the heart is nestled in, this is called the cardiac notch. So if the arrow is pointing specifically right around here would be the cardiac notch. Let's go ahead and take these off so we can see more of what's happening when the trachea splits. We'll do some surgery here, we'll remove that. All right, so we still, we got the aorta here, we got superior vena cava. So imagine the trachea coming all the way down where that's gonna split, and there's a slightly thickened piece of cartilage, this is called the carina, or you could say carina. It's like where number 12 is at, so that's the carina. And then from the splitting here, we're gonna name these tubes something else, kind of like we had with blood vessels. Anytime we had a branching, we had a different name. So the first two branches that come off the trachea are called the main bronchus. Another way to identify this is primary bronchus. Primary means it's like the first branch off. And you could say bronchus or bronchi. Bronchi is the plural version of that word. You have one going to either side, left and right. Still have some of that same cartilage going around there. And then the main or primary bronchus is gonna split again, and you're gonna have different branches going into each of the lobes. So these are called lobar bronchus. Over here, we kinda of got it here, here, and then going down there. Another way to say those is secondary because they're the second branches off. And then the third layer of branching, at least we can see on these models, coming around here, these are called the segmental bronchus. You're gonna have them on both sides, but the model is only showing it on the left side. Another way to say these is tertiary bronchus. So you could say main, lobar, segmental, or you could say primary, secondary, tertiary. Tertiary means third. I'm gonna show you this other torso model. It shows the bronchi a little bit different. So it kind of shows the lobar a little bit more clearly, I think. So you have the trachea, you have the carina, you have the main bronchus on either side. Right side, we had three lobes. So we're gonna have three lobar bronchi. Left side has two, we have two lobar bronchi. And then all around here, we have the segmental bronchi. From there, these are gonna get smaller and smaller until they're called bronchioles as we're diving into the lung tissue. And at the very end, you have the terminal bronchioles. So these models don't show that, so that's why you're gonna to have to look at some images on visible body. And also looking at the alveoli structures. You can kind of see little like dots here, little bubbles. 
Those are representing the air sacs, the lung alveoli. Uh, these are representing blood vessels going through there, some of the segmental bronchi. Uh, but again, you'll have to look at visible body for that. In case you're curious, behind the trachea is going to be the esophagus. Okay, so that's coming all the way from the bottom of the throat, laryngopharynx, esophagus is going to go to the stomach. Okay, and then finally, we got a couple muscles for inspiration to know, the process of breathing in. So one of the main muscles we have is this large one here, separating the whole thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity, is the diaphragm muscle. So all through here. On the lungs, you're seeing kind of a portion of that peeking through. There's also part of that diaphragm muscle kind of sitting around there. Another inspiratory muscle to know is going to be the external intercostals. So intercostal, costal refers to the ribs. I'm going to pick up this model over here. Um, inter means between. So these are between the ribs. We'll put this front piece on here. Okay, so these short fibers that are found between the ribs, those are the external intercostals through here. You have two layers of these muscles, external and internal. I'm just having you learn the two muscles for quiet inspiration, breathing in. So those are the external intercostals. Both this muscle with the diaphragm muscle is going to help increase the thoracic cavity volume. They kind of separate the ribs from each other just slightly. Uh, the diaphragm contracts, flattens out a little bit, and will increase the volume, which decreases the pressure, and that allows air to come into the lungs. As those muscles relax, that's what's going to be responsible for breathing out, exhalation, expiration. Um, the thoracic cavity volume decreases, forcing the pressure to increase, forcing air back out of those airways. And then something else I'll mention with the lungs, kind of where all these structures are coming in here, at the root of the lung, this region is called the hilum. You have it on either side. And it's not necessarily like a physical structure, it's just this region, kind of the root of all these structures going in, is called the hilum. Okay, so those are the structures to know on these torso models.